We did a great job fixing up that photograph. It was old, it had been scanned improperly, it was faded, uh, it didn't have much contrast to it, um, and we've, we've fixed it up quite a bit. And for a black and white photo, it looks uh, rather nice. So our next step is to take it to a new level. We're gonna add color to it. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to go to image because right now it is set as a black and white photograph and we need to change that um, actually before i change that what i will do is i will duplicate this i'll leave my background as it is i'll go to duplicate layer and it just says background copy and i'll just call it ballerina and so now I have a duplicate so just in case something were to go wrong with that photograph I won't lose the original so this is the one that I will be working with I'll go to image I'll go to mode and I have a couple of options in terms of how I want to use color right now it's set on grayscale um, I could use either CMYK or RGB and I'm going to go with RGB because you're going to have the most opportunity to use the tools that Photoshop offers when you have it set in RGB. You can always change later to CMYK if you need to print, but if you work with RGB, you're going to uh, have just, you're gonna have um, greater success with what you wanna do. So I don't necessarily want to flatten this, um, so I'm just gonna hit don't flatten. All right, now everything I'm about to do, I'm going to create a layer for. So when you're creating layers, this little plus sign is what you want to select. So I'm gonna start with a layer and I'm gonna name this layer skin, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, get my tools out here. I always like to have the double column tools. I'm gonna to go to my paintbrush, all right? And I'm gonna take a look at my paintbrush. Currently it is set at 125. That is a big brush. You can see how big it is um, on my screen. That circle shows you how big it is. There are some easy ways to adjust the size of your brush. If you simply click the left bracket on your computer, it will make your brush size smaller. If you click on the right bracket, it will make your brush size bigger. Um, I don't need it to be that big. I am going to zoom in on her a bit. Uh, but I'm going to bring it down to, we'll say, 90. And I'm also going to increase her size. Now you can do, or the zo zoom in, basically. You can hit Control Plus to zoom in. And if that is not working for you on remote PC, then I would say go to your view, go to zoom in, and do it that way. Um, but we do want to zoom in because we're going to focus on her face right now. Okay, and right now this brush is still a little too big. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. So uh, again, I can either go to where it says 90 and scroll down to whatever size I want it to be. And honestly, I would say probably we're gonna, we might even go as low as like 20. That might actually, 30 might be okay. It really depends on how your zoom is, like how close up you are. Okay, so um, with that being said, oops, I need to pick my color because I want to give her a skin tone. So right now, my color is set on black. I will probably go to this area, the orangey reds area. And I'm gonna look in some of these really light tones here and see if I can find a color that in my mind is the color of skin okay now keep in mind it's it's hard to pick out skin tones sometimes because you're looking and you know it's gonna be if, if you know assuming she's a Caucasian woman you know it's gonna be in sort of the peachy range you can certainly give her a darker skin tone if you wanted her to have a deeper skin tone you could certainly pick one I would still be selecting a skin tone in these lighter ranges regardless of whether you're going browns or whether you're going peaches or tans whatever you're going 
I would sort of, you know, stick to the lighter tones here. And so I'm just kind of clicking around. And when I find one that I like, I'll stick with this one. Uh, that's, that's the one I'll use. And of course, if I look at swatches, it's going to be the last one that comes up. And it should pop up here. This is my foreground color. Okay, so I have my color. I have my brush. I have my brush, just so that you know, I have it set on soft round, okay? I don't really want a hard brush for this because this is skin, I want it to be soft. So I'm going for a soft round. And it's set on 30, it's set on normal. The opacity is what is gonna make a huge difference, okay? If I were, I'm gonna show you really quick. If I set her at 100% opacity, look what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna color right over her and then I can't see her face, all right? So I'm gonna hit Control Z, get rid of that. Um, so clearly, I can't have 100% opacity. I need to lower this quite a bit. Now, how light do I wanna go? If you test, you can see kind of what kind of a range you get. I have it set at 31% right now. That's pretty light. Uh, I might like it a little darker than that. Control Z. I will try maybe a 40%. Let's see what we get. All right, this one's not so bad. I will say though that the color of her skin is not really looking too good to me. I feel like she needs more color. So I'm going to hit, I'm gonna hit Control Z again. I'm gonna go back to my color picker and I'm gonna try to find something that just has a little more richness to it. So maybe, maybe somewhere in here. I'm gonna give this a try, okay? So it's a, it's a lot peachier, okay? I think it's a lot more noticeable and I really want it to be noticeable. So I'm gonna go with this one. And this is kind of like coloring. I have it on 40% opacity. Uh, smoothing is zero, flow is 100. And I can go into her and I can just basically color. It's kind of fun. You just kind of keep going around. And if you make a mistake, you don't really have to worry because we have our eraser that we can use. And so I'm just kind of going around her face. Um, making sure there's color all over her. And because I have it on an opacity, I don't have to worry about losing shadows or losing highlights. And I can even add in shadows and highlights using uh, my dodge and burn tools. So I will probably be going back over her skin tone once I have a chance to get the color down. So right now I'm just coloring and I have this entire layer dedicated to her skin. And then I'll end up creating new layers for all things that I want to add color to. So um, now I'll move over to her arms. So for those of you who like coloring, this is kind of like coloring. You're, you're coloring in Photoshop, okay? You're left click, you got your finger on the uh, left side of your mouse, you're simply holding it down, you're just brushing away, okay, going over all of the parts of her, even the shadows, because the shadows will still come through, they just will have color over them. Um, her arm over here, we're going to add color to that, and I'm keeping my opacity the same, I'm not changing the opacity yet. I may change the opacity eventually, but for now, I'm sticking with the same. Uh, we've got the arm over here. If you need to lower the size of your brush, again, uh, you can click the left bracket on your keyboard, and that will make your brush smaller. If you need your brush bigger, click on the right bracket. Okay, now when I get to something like, when I get to something like this, where there's some fabric in front of her, I am gonna do, make some 
changes to the opacity, I'm going to make it a little lighter so that that fabric looks like it's in front. So I'm going to check her over real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I'm going to scroll down because I do want to get her legs as well. So I'll go in here and I will add some tone to her legs. And again, if you're not the best colorer, don't worry about it because the eraser can erase anything we mess up on. If you accidentally color over her shoe, you can erase it. You can also control Z, you know, but the problem is if you control Z, you might end up taking out more than you want to take out. You might only want to take out a little bit. And uh, if you control Z, it'll take out everything that you did within a certain area. So if, for instance, I decided I wanted to erase right now, I could just click the eraser and you can see I could erase everything on her leg right there if I wanted to. Um, I don't, so I'm going to go back to my paintbrush and I'm going to go back over this area. Now keep in mind every time you um, go over, you are adding more color. So when I went over that just now, I added more color in that one area. Um, so those are, you know, things to remember. Uh, if you feel like you need to kind of start fresh, sometimes that's not a bad way to go to uh, keep things keep things even. Uh, because I'm just trying to get you through this lesson, I'm not going to correct that leg, even though that leg really should be corrected if I was, whoops, if I was, um, if I was doing this, like, say, for, you know, a person, and it was, you know, something they were paying me for, I would probably make sure that was absolutely perfect, but my goal right now is just to show you how these things work. Now, her hand, I want to add some color to that, so I'll go back to the paintbrush, I'll use the same color, but I'm going to lower the opacity. Um, we'll try, let's just see what happens if we go with 23. Because the idea is that I'm probably going to be going over this with whatever color her dress is going to be, but I still want it to suggest that there's skin under there. So that's why I've lowered the opacity and um, I can look and see if there's any place else that I want to do that, like here, her thumb and her fingers. You know, so there's a little bit of color in there. There might even be a, a slight bit of color in this area. You know, you figure she's wearing a very, um, you know, she's wearing chiffon, which is a very see-through fabric. So um, I probably would want to see a little bit of skin tone there, and I just kind of erased the arm slightly. All right, so um, maybe I want her to have some rosy cheeks, so I'll pick out a nice pink tone, or maybe, I don't know if I want it pink or mauve -y. For you guys, this might seem a little, uh, uh, you might not know what you want to do with this. Don't worry about it. I'm going to lower this to maybe 17%, and I'm just going to put a little rosiness in her cheeks there so that she looks, you know, happy and there's color to her skin, and she's not, you know, you know, she looks like she has a little bit of makeup on or something. I can add some color up here too if I want to, add some color here. And I'm still working on skin, so everything I'm doing right now is still on the skin layer. Um, her lips, I might want to go a little heavier with her lips. Now, her lips have a very black appearance to them, so I might really need to increase the opacity, and I'm definitely going to have to decrease the size of my, um, my brush. Oops clicking the wrong thing. So I'm going to first zoom in on those lips um, and my brush is too big 
So again, all I need to do is press the left bracket, or I can just go up to the brush and reduce the size. Now I have the opacity pretty high, because if I don't have a high opacity, I'm not gonna cover those black lips, okay? So it's a pretty high opacity, all right? Does it need to be this high? It's hard to say. I'm going to back up a little bit. We could try. Uh, we could try a lower opacity. Let's just see what happens if I lower the opacity on the bottom lip so that it's maybe more of like an, a 75. Let's see how things look. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, and again, this is practice, okay? So don't worry if this isn't perfect. I just want you guys to get a feel for how you do these things, okay? So it's still kind of dark, but here's some, something I can do to make those look, lips look a little more realistic. If I go to my Dodge and Burn tools, the Dodge tool is going to give me highlights. Uh, I'm going to need to reduce the size of it. It's too too big right now. But if I go in here now and I start to just dodge a little bit in her lips, I'm going to pull out some color. And right now the exposure is 97%, so it's pretty strong. Um, I could even, if I went higher, and I'm going to reduce the size of this some more, I could even pull out more color, you know what I mean? So there could be these highlights. Um, and if I back up, let's just see what happens. At a distance, you see like the highlights and the various things in her lips. So if you're looking at it at a distance, you know, it looks, it looks pretty good. She at least has some color to her lips and she doesn't look, um, you know, like she's got black lips. Um, next, I want to do her hair. So I will add a new layer. Uh, I, I want to be able to keep these things separated because you never know if you want to delete something altogether. I could end up giving her brown hair and decide I don't like her with brown hair. I want her to have red hair or I want her to have black hair. And so um, if I have a separate layer and it's not on my skin layer, I'm going to have a much easier time making changes if I choose to make them. So what color hair should I give her? For some reason, I see her as a redhead. I'm not sure why I see her as a redhead. But um, I just, I kind of do. So I'm giving her sort of an, this is more of an auburn look, okay? And um, again, you pick whatever color you want. This is just for fun. This is for us to learn how to restore old photos. And um, so she can look any way you want. All right, I sometimes lose my cursor. All right, so um, there we go. Gonna get up close. Uh, now my, my brush is way too small. And actually I still have the Dodge tool on. So I need to switch to my brush. I've got the brown. The brush is too small, so I'm going to enlarge it with my bracket. I'm using the right bracket. And when I use the right bracket, I can then go into the... Now I have it set at 77%, that's a little too high. So Command Z or Control Z, uh, lighten that up quite a bit. Let's see what we get if we just put a light layer of brown in here, okay? I like that better because it suggests she has very dark hair, but there are some highlights that are standing out with the brown. So um, I kind of go in here. It, again, if you accidentally kind of go out of the boundary, let's say I accidentally go into the brick, it doesn't matter because I can go back in with my eraser. So I'm just sort of kind of going over this all very lightly. All right, she's got color in her hair now. And I am going to take my eraser 
and as long as you're on the same layer you will only erase whatever's on that layer so I'm kind of cleaning up around her hair so it doesn't look like it goes out of the boundaries so now she's got um, this pretty brown hair she's got these rosy lips um, if I need to add some highlights to her face, again, I can go to the Dodge tool, uh, probably make it a little bigger by clicking the right bracket. I can lift out tone if I feel like she needs some highlights in some places. Um, and so you'll see this work um, on her dress a lot. So I'm really just trying to pull out some highlights now in her face okay um, the lips do seem slightly pink but that's okay all right so um, I'm gonna pick a color for her dress now oops and um, So your dress can be whatever you want it to be. There's some pretty silver in that dress. You might want to keep some of the silver. So just pick a color. And actually, since I've already got some real pretty burgundies here, I'll stick with the burgundy. And I will again increase the size of my brush. But I got to make sure I'm on the brush. Um, the other thing I have to do is make sure I have a layer designated for the dress. If I don't, then whatever I do, it's going to be added to the hair. And then if I mess up the hair, then I've kind of now messed up. Or if I mess up the dress, I've now messed up the hair. So keep keep your layers separated. All right. So now I've got a tool that's about this big. I could probably go larger. The opacity is set at 26%. And if you see what I'm doing, that's about the tone I get with a 26% opacity, okay? If I want it to be darker, it can be. If I'm happy with that, that uh, color, then I can leave it at that. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go into the um, chiffon part of her dress, and I'm going to color that in. I'm going to leave the silvery parts so that it looks like her dress is actually silver and and um, and this mauve color and then I will just kind of go up into this section and again it's like coloring so if you like coloring it's kind of good now again keep in mind you got to keep your finger pressed as you're doing this um, and when you do go over things, you will add another layer. So even if it's 26%, when you go to go over it a second time, you're now adding to that. So it's going to start to look darker when you go over things multiple times. So just be careful if that is not your intention. If your intention is for the colors to, you know, kind of have a nice even tone to them, then, um, and try to you know not go over things multiple times okay so I'm almost done with her dress and I'm 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 gonna show you an example of a finished piece with the brick and everything done but this is as far as I'm going to go just understand that you're adding layers every time you add a new color you're adding layers so when I back up a little bit you can see here's her dress here's her face her skin um, if I wanted to complete this I'll show you again a completed variation and that would be here this uh, this one is completed the bricks have had color added to them uh, even put a border on it and added some some wording so you can go as far as you want with this. Um, feel free to work with your dodge and burn tools, okay? Your dodge tool is going to make things lighter, so if you feel 
that like you want this part of her dress to sparkle more you might go in there and just kind of make it a little bit lighter so that it sparkles you might want um, if you're trying to work on the silver part of her dress remember you have to go to her because we didn't put a color there there's no color on her there's only color and I have that pre set pretty high um, there's only color on the purple part so if there's something you want to do to her per se the original photograph you're gonna have to go to you're gonna have to go to the original photograph unless you're you're only changing colors and what I'm doing right now is I'm just sort of enhancing some of the lighter areas of this so that it sort of sparkles more okay and I can do that too like I already did it to the pink part but if I do it to the silver part as well this will also kind of brighten up more and this will brighten up and all I'm doing is using my my dodge tool it's just basically it's lifting out those lights okay and uh, making things really sparkle okay so I'm, I'm looking for white areas is what I'm doing I'm seeking out my white areas and I'm just sort of going over them a little bit and uh, in so doing you know things are just brightening up a lot okay and if you you know are going for the opposite where you want to deepen some tones deepen some shadows go to your burn tool and your burn tool is going to kind of have the opposite effect. It's going to it's going to deepen your shadows. It's going to accentuate dark tones. And so if you're going for a high contrast look to this, you might really want to work with the dodge and the dodge and burn tools. Okay? So I'm going to stop here. You can add color to the background if you choose to. Okay? All right. We'll get together soon.